That shit, man. You guys are all tripoded up over here. I'm proud of it. So, uh, your character dances between good and evil. You know, he's a likable bad guy for her. <laughs> so, yes. what's going to happen in this season for him? Yeah. Doing him a whole life. Uh, <laughs> What's happening in Blaine's life is he's, uh, you know, he's throwing his dad in a whip. Yeah. He's uh, taking over his pop's business, and, you know, zombie, uh, Seattle, New Seattle is, is walled off. It's kind of a, essentially, it's like a Miracle Texas and Leftovers, right? Yeah. People trying to get in so they can get the miracle of that town. Or people with terminal illness just trying to get in so they can get scratched and become a zombie so they can live forever. Uh, and Blaine is his business is booming. He's shady bots has become a cemetery two table restaurant called Romero's, um, where it's like a Michelin star zombie restaurant. Um, we have no shame. God bless him. Um, it's fantastic. That's actually the first time I said cemetery to table without laughing, but now I'm laughing about it. Now. I'm talking about laughing about it. Uh, yeah. So what do you think the biggest challenge is going to be moving from where we left things off? The biggest challenges will be what? From where we stopped three yeah. into four. Well, I mean, we pick up three months later, so like it's all been walled off. It's like Seattle's on quarantine, right? So. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of backstory probably in the, even in those three months that we'll flash back to or touch on and stuff like that. But the biggest challenge is for my character, for the show, what do you, both, I mean, it's, yeah, I think for Liv, it's, there's a challenge, I mean, everybody's in the know at this point, everybody's walled up in, in New Seattle. Uh, for Blaine, there's no challenges, right? I don't feel he really has challenges. I mean, obviously, Robert Nepper is a regular now, so we weren't just going to be, like, shooting into a well for the next season as a regular. We're going to pay Robert Nepper, Robert Nepper money and just have his voice in a well. Uh, he gets out of the well, so that'll be a challenge for Blaine. I know that. Yeah. How about your romance? What's that? Your romance. Your romance? Yes. Oh, that ship sailed. <laughs> Yeah, I've, you know, I said it before, it's only, it's only a shot for that, for that long con that he had gone, was to, you know, come to move to New Hampshire and make artisanal candles together and never to talk to her West Coast friends ever again, ever. <laughs> make a new life. That was just... He was on borrowed time. But it seemed like he was becoming like like normal. Like he had that romance. He, he was, was and I, th I think he really wanted to be that person. Yeah. And he wanted to believe that he could be that person. But the long and the short of it was that he lied his way into even attempting to go that way as a person. So. But I think for, uh, for a viewer, you want you want you want to see him. Yes, and, and it was I think it was important for us to humanize him um, in that way. And Rob was like talking about the, like the payoff is going to be good. And the writers, Diane, can speak to this is, is that they felt handcuffed in the writers' room because they really want to write great shit for me and for Blaine. And there was just like this babe lost in the woods, and it was kind of milk toast, you know what I mean? And uh, and I was like handcuffing for you. I felt castrated out there, even knowing this guy was. But it was fun to play a different view, and then. For, as an audience to get y'all back on his side, right? So, a little bit, if not all the way. And then you're like, I, didn't think, I knew he was lying. I knew it. <laughs> but, but there's a part of you that was like, oh, you're so sweet. And then it's like, so... And the daddy so issues. So it's like, it, unless, unless, the, unless there wasn't some human... Yeah, the daddy issues. That was another important uh, building block in that kind of thing was that... Uh, He's, he was rich, he was raised rich, but he was very poor, very poor in many ways, and um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, unless we didn't have shit like that, like the daddy of Sears and the nanny locking him up in a double cage, and, like, and the memory loss thing, you know, I would have been dead seasons ago. <laughs> <laughs> so Diane teased that... Um Major and Liv are going to be at heads because they have different political views. Are you going to be, you know, going head to head with Liv 
because of the way that you're running your business and how you, like, are you going to be butting heads with her? I don't know. I truly don't know. Um, I haven't even been told about what Liv, but I mean, the last time you saw Liv and Blaine, they were, they were hardy boys together, you know what I mean? They were, they would save the day, so, so that's always save fun. The day. I think we want to see more of that. I always love playing with it, and Rose and I love to work together, but yeah. it's like, she hates him so much, but sometimes it's like, God damn it, I gotta work with this guy. Yeah. So, I'd love to see more of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much.